So normally when I'm thinking about solutions and, and things like this, I'd really prefer to use the calculator and let Desmos kind of show me what's going on. I've got a couple problems here. Number one, uh, this is a parabola or this would kind of work its way into that category of parabolas because we've had an x squared. If we, pull, if we distributed that x in, we would have an x squared and that would kind of complicate things. Um, the other problem is we don't have answer choices, so it's hard to just kind of like guess and check for values of k. Um, so we're, we're probably gonna need to do this the hard way. It, there might be some other clever solution, and I know that I, I could figure out a way to do the calculator by kind of manipulating this equation a little bit, and I'll show you kind of where that would come in. Um, but let's just do it the more traditional way here first. When we're talking about solutions, and we're talking about the number of solutions, and we're specifically talking about parabolas, or um, x squared situations, uh, we want to get back into standard form. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, so we can do that here. Uh, in this case, it's going to be 0 equals that, but it's kind of the same thing. So let's start by just, just distributing this in. So we are going to get kx squared minus 56x equals negative 16. I'm going to add the 16 to both sides, so let's get kx squared minus 56x plus 16 equals zero. Now, um, I don't actually care what the x-intercepts are, the solutions, I only care what uh, how many there are. And so for this, we're going to use an idea called the discriminant, the discriminant, and many of you who are in Algebra 2 or higher have already done this in school, but you probably forgot it. It is b squared minus 4ac, which is part of the quadratic formula, it's the part under the radical, and that piece by itself tells us the number of solutions without telling us exactly what those solutions are. So it's good for our purposes, it's just kind of a shortcut that lets us just see what's overall happening without having to deal with like the complexity of um, the entire quadratic formula. So the B, the A, the C, these are all gonna come from uh, these components, and this is why we needed to get it in standard form. So this is our B, this is our C, and the A, is the k. So we have a, a variable and I'll replace it with k, but that's an unknown that we're going to have to deal with. So what we want to know is if there are no real solutions, that is going to happen when d, the discriminant, is less than zero. If d is a negative number, then we have no solutions. If d is a positive number, that's when we're going to have two solutions, and if d is equal to zero, that's when we're going to have one solution. But we don't care about those right now, we just want to see when is b squared minus 4ac going to be less than zero. So let's write that out. So b squared minus 4ac, so negative 56 squared minus 4 times k times 16 is less than zero. We can start to clean this up. So 56, uh, negative 56 squared, I'm going to have to do that in my calculator, I don't know that off the top of my head. That's 3,136 minus 4 times 16 is 64. Yes. Minus 64 uh, K is less than 0. So I'm going to add this over. So we're going to get 3,136, oop, not equals, um, is greater than 64 K. And then I'm going to divide by 64 to solve for K. So K has to be greater than 3, 1, 3, 6 divided by 64, 49. So k, I'm going to read it kind of backwards, k is greater than 49. So uh, k is an integer. So uh, what is the least possible value of k? So if k has to be greater than 49, the smallest integer that's greater than 49 is 50. So uh, that is the answer. Um, the, the way that I could use the calculator um, I would need to kind of work it in when it's a parabola. So I'm kind of going to use um, this this version. I think this is going to work. We'll have to see. I didn't actually try it out beforehand. So let's clear everything, reset. So I'm going to write this as, instead of equals zero, I'm going to write this as y equals, let's just do k, k x squared um, minus 56 x plus 16. So right now it's it's trying to graph it, but it, it, I gave it this k and it's like, well, what do we do with this? We don't, it's, it's gotta have it give me a number here. I don't know what this k is. So if I hit the add a slider button, it's gonna come up with a number and it looks like a straight line, but it's not, it's a, it's a parabola. And I guess I can zoom out, see if I can see it better. Yeah, there we go. Now we're starting to see as a parabola. So let's widen it and kind of shrink it this way. 
Yeah, there we go. Let's get that real nice parabola shape. So right now with k being 1, we have two solutions, and that's because we have two points where it crosses the x-axis. So this is where the calculator helps me and this slider helps me, is I want to see at what point does it no longer cross that x-axis. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the slider, and you can see it starts to move up, and you can see that it's moving closer and closer to the axis so that it's eventually going to go above it. Right, so if I now if I zoom in again, you can see it's it it looks close, but that's because I zoomed out so much. So we got to get it over. And I'm at the end of my slider. I'm at the end of ten. So here's what I would do: if I click it, it's going to let me change it to different things. So I would just kind of start playing with it at this point. I'd kind of guess and check. I'd say, all right, well, ten seems like we got a ways to go. So I'd be like, all right, what about twenty-five? Ooh, getting there. What about um, you know? I know it's fifty, but let's not sure on that. Let's just try sixty. Ah, well, sixty has no solutions, right? Notice it's not crossing that x-axis anymore, it's above it, but now I gotta work it back. And so I'd be like, okay, can I get it there? At what point is it gonna hit? It looks like it's getting close, look at 50. And now look, at 50, we are hitting, uh, we are above the x-axis. We gotta zoom really to see it, but there you are. And then what about 49? Oh, 49, oh, see this is the problem with this slider is I can't, Get it, there you go. At 49, if we're really careful, we can see that it's just dipping below it. It's just dipping below. We gotta really, really see it. Oh, there you go. It's it's there. It's just dipping below. Um, so it, it's tricky. This is, I, I, I thought I'd be more clear about it. And you can play with the zoom a little bit and, and eventually you will see that it kind of it kind of comes below. Um, but, uh, it's, it's not as definitive as I would like it to be. So it's possible, especially if I'm completely confused, but the benefit of this discriminant idea is it's a lot to memorize, but it works. And so it's, it's just proof that you've got what you're looking for. So hopefully uh, I've given you enough to go on, but yeah, this is something I would probably have done algebraically. Um, even being clever with the calculator takes a lot of effort and uh, confusion. So I think the algebra rarely uh, for the SAT, the algebra is the way to go here.